This video is going to be about the concluding statement portion of the Melkine paragraph writing process. Uh, before you start, make sure that you have something to write with and some paper or access to a blank Google Doc so you can write out or type out some examples near the end of this presentation. So here we go. Probably heard this a lot by now, but this is a portion of the Melkine paragraph. We have worked our way to the concluding sentence, the final part of the Melkine writing process. So we have the main idea, evidence, links, and now the concluding sentence. We will get background on all of those in just a minute. So I know you probably can't bear it any longer, but this is the body paragraph portion. Um, it's going to really help create clear and organized writing and avoid some choppiness that some of us complain about when it comes to writing in the past. So this is going to make you a much better writer with better organization and strong evidence. So we got the main idea done, evidence is over, link is in the bag, been there, done that, we're moving on to the con. But first, a brief refresher. Um, the M, main idea, also known as the claim or the argument, it's what you're trying to prove with your paragraph. It's in one sentence, it's basically answering a question with an opinion. Our evidence, this is the proof. It is the support for our answer and our reason and our main idea. Oftentimes, especially when we're writing about stuff that we read, so writing about literature, we're going to be using quotes with citations. Quotes is taking someone else's work from another text and then putting it into your work. A citation gives credit to whoever wrote that originally, so you are not just taking someone else's stuff without giving them credit. Link, this is where we elaborate or explain. So this is important. This is where we're explaining what the evidence means and also how it proves that the answer and the reason for our answer and the main idea are correct. Now, Concluding statement, I like to call it the mic drop because it's the last thing we talk about. It's that last thing we give people to think about before we head out. So it's just, you, you drop a recap on them and then boom, you drop the mic. So some details about our concluding statements. It's the last sentence of our paragraph. It's a sentence that wraps everything up, pretty much like a recap. It begins with a transition word or phrase. We want to avoid some cliches so our writing doesn't get boring. So we're trying to avoid in conclusion or as you can see, but you'll get a fairly big list of potential concluding statement transition words in just a bit. Um, our goal here, we are rewording our position of our main idea sentence after our transition phrase. And then we're replacing the reason of the main idea sentence with a summary of our evidence. So we're putting everything together before we move on to something else. So why do we do this? We're summarizing our big points, we're emphasizing what's important, and then this is our last thing that we have to give our reader before they leave, either they're done with your, they're done reading your writing, or they move on to another point that you're making in a future paragraph. Uh, just a quick note, I know lots of students often get the concluding statement and the conclusion paragraph mixed up. You're gonna know how to do both of them, but we're just talking about phrasing here. So the last sentence in a body paragraph is called the concluding statement. The last paragraph in an essay is called the conclusion paragraph. So they're different things, even though they have similar names. Concluding statements at the end of a paragraph, conclusion paragraphs at the end of an essay. So just a, just a helpful note there. So I've been trying to come up with some formulas, just some basic formats, formulas, whatever you want to call it, that you can organize this info into as you are writing on your own. So this is something that I would probably keep with me, whether I take it down in a note or whatever it may be. But your typical concluding statement has three parts, and I've color coded them. So our first part here, we have a transition word or phrase. We're moving on from a link into our concluding statement. So we want to show that we're moving on to something different. We are rewording our main idea, especially that topic verb position. So we need those elements in there. So you're not copying and pasting your main idea. 
you have that same idea, but you're rephrasing it, you're paraphrasing to make it slightly different wording, same message. And then we are replacing our original main idea reason with a summary of our evidence or evidence if we, you know, if we have more than one, okay? Either way, we're putting this all together to create a concluding statement before we move on either to the end of our paper or to a new paragraph. Some transitions, this is gonna be a helpful list. Remember previously when we've talked about transition words, they're not all created equal, okay? You don't wanna use first at the end of your, at the end of a paragraph, just like you don't wanna use second at the beginning of your paragraph. So you need to make sure that you're picking an appropriate transition word for where you're located in your paragraph. These are some good ones that show, all right, we're moving towards the end, we're wrapping up here. So, you know, this is a pretty solid list of 20. There are more, but this is a very solid list to begin looking at. Come back to this whenever you need it. Write a few down if you'd like. And we will continue. So let's conclude. Just kidding, there's more. But we're concluding this part of the lesson because we're gonna go and try some examples. So please have, like I said earlier, an open Google Doc that you can just type some notes in or have something to write with and some paper so you can try these examples on your own. The reason we're doing this is if you can try these and have something that resembles the sample answer afterwards, it shows that you're understanding what's going on and what you need to do when you're writing on your own. So this is very good practice. You're gonna pause the video when you're finished listening to the example. You're gonna take as long as it needs to write your answer while it's paused. So you don't, you know, the video doesn't keep going and spoil the answer for you. Once you're done, you're gonna play the video and you can see some sample answers. And if your answer is, you know, matching up with that or has something similar to it and you're having all those parts from the formula, things should be looking good and that shows that you are ready to work on your own with topics that you're creating later on. We have three examples. We'll try this for each of them. Um, but first, just a final reminder, what are those three parts? What do we need to include in a concluding statement? Well, just to be clear, we want to use a transition word or phrase at the beginning. Then we wanna reword or paraphrase our main idea topic and our position, which is our answer to the question. And then finally, we wanna replace that main idea reason with some summary of our evidence. And then, once you're done with that, you can pat yourself on the back for finishing an awesome Melcon paragraph, which is always good stuff. You should be very hyped. I know I am. So with that in mind, let's keep that energy going and try out a couple examples. Our first one. So it's using a similar example from a previous video, which is fine. Um, we have our main idea. Alternative music is the best genre because it has so many different sounds. We have our evidence. First, alternative music can include bands that have rock qualities, but also artists that have rap qualities. Our link, what does that mean? Alternative music has something to offer fans of all genres. And then how does that prove our main point? Well, alternative music is the best genre because fans of rap and rock can enjoy it due to the different sounds it includes. So pause this video in just a second. Your goal here is in blue, write a concluding statement based off the main idea, evidence, and link that has been written for you above. Remember the formula for our concluding statement. We have first our transition word or phrase. We're rewording our main ideas topic and position. And then we're summarizing evidence as our reason. So pause this video, click play when you're ready to see a sample answer. All right, let's give it a try. So we have this color coding down here, our answer. And so our first part, oops, we got this popping up here. Um, our transition word or phrase, so, all right, pretty simple. So far, so good. We're rewording our main idea's topic and position. If we look at our main idea up above, our topic, alternative music, our verb is, and then the best genre is our answer, our position. So we need to find a, a way to reword that. The best music genre is alternative. Same idea, we just mix it up a little bit. 
And then instead of our reason that we had up in our main idea, because it has so many different sounds, we're summarizing our evidence. We're writing our evidence in our own words here. Good word to get to our evidence is because, because it contains the qualities of many other genres like rock and rap, which allows the genre to attract all types of music fans. So this is why it's the best. So we got our pieces from our main idea and our evidence pieced together in our concluding statement because this is what's most important for our reader to know before they leave and move on. If you wrote something close to this, you're definitely on the right track. It doesn't need to be word for word, but as long as you're following those three steps, those three parts of the formula, you should be looking good and ready to go. Let's try another one. All right, I'm serious here. We're gonna talk about libraries. So our main idea, libraries need to continue to receive government funding because of all the things libraries help do for their communities. Our evidence, oftentimes, transition word, Libraries run many different educational classes for all ages at little or no cost to the public. So our link, what is that saying? Libraries are willing to help anyone and rarely charge for it. How does that prove that our main idea is right? Libraries need funding to run these free activities for their community members. So we're showing something good and now we're showing why they need that money, right? So we need to write a concluding statement based off the main idea, evidence, and link that has been given to us. Pause this video, make sure you're working on a transition word or phrase, you're rewording that main idea, topic, and position, and then you are summarizing your evidence as your reason. Pause it, take as much time as you need, and then click play when you're ready to see a sample answer. All right, let's check it out. Answer review. We are looking at our concluding statement down here. Our first part, transition word, consequently. What a nice word choice, all right? But that just means as a consequence of this funding, of this argument here, our rewording of our main idea, governments must continue to fund public libraries. So we see some similar words up here, reorganized with some different wording in between. And then our reason, summarizing our evidence. So we're looking here to provide our reason because we're connecting this all into one sentence here because these libraries help people of all ages in a variety of ways for nearly no cost. So we have something similar here, put down here, but it's connected with our idea that we originally presented at the beginning of our paragraph. Once again, if you didn't exactly have something like this, that's totally fine. There are different ways to do this. But if you had these three parts, our transition phrase or word, rewording the main idea, topic, and position, and then summarizing that evidence, you should be good to go. One more just for good practice. Talking about the rainforest, that's always important. Our main idea, rainforests need extra protection because of how many species live there. Our evidence, po uh, poison dart frogs only live in the Amazon rainforest. Interesting. Link, first part, first sentence. What does the evidence say or mean? If the rainforests are further destroyed, the world could lose its small population of poison dart frogs. That would be sad. But how does that prove that our main idea is right, that rainforests need extra protection? Poison dart frogs and other species like it will be gone forever unless protections are increased for rainforests around the world. So we're showing the consequence if we don't do that. So pause this video. Your goal is to write a transition word or phrase leading into our concluding statement, rewording our main ideas, topic, and position, which we see at the top of the page. And then instead of using that same reason, we're summarizing our evidence as our reason. So go ahead and pause this video, take as much time as you need, trying to include those three things in our concluding statement. Click play when you're ready to see a sample answer. All right, let's look this last one over. Answer review. That's my frog. All right, so we are looking at the bottom. We have our color coding so you can see which part is fulfilling which part of the formula. Transition word, as a result, cause and effect. That's always a good one here. We're rewording our main idea, topic, and position. As a result, nations around the world need to create more rules to save rainforests. Well, why? Well, let me summarize my evidence and tell you why. Because tons of species, like the poison dart frog, will become extinct without their natural habitats. 
So we're showing why this is really important. We're putting all these pieces together and we're coming up with a concluding statement, a final message to leave our reader before they leave us. Awesome job. Congrats. That's some good stuff. Now that we've gone through this, you know all the elements of the Melcon paragraph. So shortly, you're going to start writing these paragraphs on your own based on things that you read in your class. Please, I'm begging you, come back to these slides and videos whenever you need to, whether you're in this class or any time in the future. The slides and the videos will always be available to you whenever you need them, and they're good for a refresher, all right? Um, there's one on main idea, there's one on evidence, there's one on quoting and citing, there's one on link, and then there's this one on concluding statements. So you can get all that instruction and all those tips and all those formulas and all those examples to try whenever you need them. These are here for you to help you become a better writer. So take advantage of them, okay? So before we head out, just a couple things now that we have all the pieces to the puzzle. A good paragraph is going to have some of these things, or going to have all of these things. One main idea sentence. We're going to have our evidence with the context, a quote, and then a citation to show where that quote came from. At least two sentences in our link explaining what the evidence means and how it proves the main idea is correct. And then a one sentence conclusion. We want everything in that concluding statement to be fit into one sentence. A couple other helpful hints, keep verb tense consistent. That means we're always writing in the same tense. If we're always using is, we're always using is. If we're always using was, was, okay? So when we're writing about things that we read, we want to use the present tense, which is is, and there's other words that go along with that as well. Use transitions when appropriate. We've got some lists of transition words throughout these videos and slides. Take advantage of them. Remember, you need to make sure you're picking one that's locating in the right area. Um, but there are plenty, plenty to choose from. Here's a sample paragraph, just if you're looking to see how all this is going to go together. Um, main idea is in green. So we have our topic, verb, position, and reason. I know, you're impressed, right? Wow. A life skill that should be taught in schools is meal planning because it would help eliminate the obesity epidemic in our nation. So our topic, life skills that should be taught. Taught is our verb. Where is it being taught? In or B, taught in schools is meal planning because <clears throat> our reason, it should help eliminate the obesity epidemic in our nation. Then we have our evidence, we have our context. First of all, students could benefit from learning more about how to have a balanced diet. In addition, a good transition word here and a phrase here. In addition, planning ahead for the week would help prevent impulse buying at lunchtime. As the blogger Skinny Miss stated, instead of taking a whirl through the drive-thru, so this is our context for the quote, we're introducing with a comma and then we're getting into our Quote here in our quotation marks, meal planning eliminates the need to rely on this unhealthy last minute option. Then we have our citation. This one is from an article and our period at the end here. Our link, therefore, transition word. It is clear that there is a link between planning meals and avoiding fast food choices throughout the week. Thus, meal planning is worth the time and effort and it may take that it may take to invest in a weekly routine that will benefit you in the long run. So we're connecting these two things up here, our main idea and our evidence. And then we have our concluding statement. Ultimately, taking the time to prepare nutritious meals will aid in putting an end to the obesity problem we currently face in the United States. So we're taking pieces of this and this, throwing a transition word at the beginning. Boom, we're done. We have a complete paragraph. We have all those steps. We've given credit to our source. We have context. We've thoroughly explained how this all works together. So to wrap this up, concluding statements are the final sentences and paragraphs. The purpose of a concluding statement is to reinforce the importance of your main idea and show how that evidence connects or links to it. Many think of a concluding statement as a recap. You're taking elements all from, from through, throughout your paper and you're putting them together at the end to create this very strong message. And remember, this is your last chance to have an effect on your reader. 
So you want to have them walk away with those big points, all right? That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, as always, let your teacher know. They'll be happy to help. Reference this video whenever you need it, and good luck with your writing.